This is Deej Leg telling stories from my nonfiction book, Cab Log, Diary of a Cab Driver, about my years driving a cab. This one is a story called Roadkill Willie. It was a busy night on the night shift, and I got a call from the dispatcher to pick up at an old hole-in-the-wall redneck bar. I pull up, honk, two guys come out, 40 to 50 years old, two drunk, hard, grizzled rednecks, man. They look like buzzards, leather skin, missing teeth, still in their work clothes, dirty and tough. And I'm like, all right, how y'all, what are y'all doing tonight? And they're like, well, we're in town working construction. I was like, cool. Well, where, to, where do you want to go to? And they're like, we want to go to Desperado Strip Club. We heard that's the good spot. Yeah, yeah, that's the place we want to be. Cool. So we roll toward the strip club and continue making small talk along the way. And one of the guys in the back um, says to me, he goes, my name's Trent, and guess what? My buddy here is Britney Spears' uncle. And I start laughing, okay, all right. And uh, I look over at the guy he's referring to, fella tan wiry, and uh, he looks at me and says, I'm from Kentwood, and the press, they call me Roadkill Willie. No shit. Yep, I'm Roadkill Willie. Yep, I'm the brother of Britney's father. So, yeah, what a trip. We keep rolling, and Willie's actually kind of entertaining. You know, he's funny. Throwing out little stories. Justin Timberlake's a pussy man, but that motherfucker can sing. He keeps tossing out little bits like that. He's like, Britney's baby daddy. That motherfucker's a bum. My brother almost kicked his ass. So we keep rolling on. And they keep talking some shit, and just tossing out stories, and I drop them off at their destination at the strip club. I roll back out, and I continue fielding calls on the night's shift. And then about two hours later, the dispatcher calls me on the radio, and he's, number four, uh, you remember those two fellas you dropped off at Desperados? Yeah, 10-4. Uh, well, they, uh, well, they just called, they want you to go pick them up again. Like 10 4. Okay, so I whip the cab around and I head north on I 49. I pull up to the club. I honk the horn. Nobody comes out. Wait a few minutes. Still nobody coming out. That means I gotta go park the cab, lock it up, walk inside, and go navigate the inside of the club and try to find these two dudes, which is always a pain in the ass at a packed ass, you know, club of any kind, much more a strip club. So I go in place is packed man strippers dancing obnoxious music is blasting a lot of dudes walking around so i make my way around the club looking for the roadkill boys at this point i'm almost 100 percent positive they're completely wasted but i don't know for sure nonetheless i'm walking around the interior of the club and out of the corner of my eye i see someone kind of drunkenly scissor stepping toward the men's room and sure enough it's trent roadkill willie's buddy so I make my way over there. Hey, dude, what's up, Trent? I'm here, cab driver. Let's rock and roll. Where's Willie? Trent points over to the stage, and I look over, and I see Willie feeding money to a stripper on stage. Just doing his thing, being roadkill Willie. So I grab Trent by the shirt, and I navigate over to Willie. We kind of stumble through the crowd. I grab Willie, yell in his ear, Yo, dude, cab driver, I'm here. Let's let's rock and roll. Let's get out of here. Well, he turns to me. All right, let's do it. So I grab both of these guys. They're both trashed, by the way. Not completely surprising. And I grab them each by an arm like kids and steer them both three wide out of the club, just kind of bumping into people, kind of squeezing around tables and whatnot. I get them outside. We all pile in the cab and we roll to their destination now which is a bombed out trailer park on the other side of town and i'm actually kind of familiar with this trailer park because it's sometimes used as almost like a mining camp for hardcore long shot manual labor types that are doing itinerant labor jobs they house them up there 
So it's about a 20 minute drive. We roll, they make small talk, fade in and out of consciousness. I'm trying to keep them from passing out, which is always a pain in the ass. Like you, you don't you don't want people passing out in your cab. It's too, too much trouble getting paid, getting them out, waking them up. You have to touch them or poke them with a stick or something on the ground. It, it's an ordeal. So we're rolling. The conversation actually isn't that interesting because they're both wasted and trashed and on the verge of unconsciousness. So we get to their destination, which is this bombed out trailer park. And uh, they pay me, and they even tip me a few bucks, which is super cool. Like, these guys are hardworking dudes. They're working for the money. Like, I really always appreciated that. Like, I never resented people that had to break their backs to make a dollar if they didn't tip me. Like, no problem. I get it. So they pile out of the cab, and I watch them stumble off and kind of disappear into the darkness. But as a last thought, I just I holler out at Willie. I'm like, hey, man, what are y'all going to do for the rest of the night? And... Willie stops and kind of thinks a second. He turns to me and he's like, kind of swaying in the breeze. And he says, probably smoke or rock. And off they go, stumbling into the darkness. Roadkill Willie, man, and his buddy Trent, proudly representing the city of Kentwood, Louisiana. Probably smoke a rock.